Hello everyone, welcome back to chemistry lecture and I will discuss some more questions from electrochemistry. Okay, we can go to the question. The first question, what is the potential of the cell containing two hydrogen electrodes as represented below? Okay, the concentration of H plus ions are given, that is 10 raised to minus 8 molar and 0 0.001 molar, okay. We need to find out the cell potential. We can write the cell potential equation that is E cell is equals E0 cell minus, okay. For standard cell potential we can write 0 0.059 divided by 2 and log concentration of anode that is anode ion concentration divided by cathode concentration. Clear? Here we use the hydrogen electrode therefore we can write E0 cell for hydrogen electrode is equal to 0, okay. And concentration of H plus ions in the anode electrode it is equals 10 raised to minus 8, yeah, okay, that is it, anode then concentration of H plus ions in the cathode terminal, okay, that is 0 0.001 molar, that is equal to 10 raised to minus 3 molar, that is at cathode terminal. Then we can substitute the values, E cell equals E0 cell that is 0 minus 0 0.059 by here 0 0.059 by n not 2 okay 0 0.059 divided by n the number of electrons gained or lose is equal to 1 here that is 1 h plus ion will accept 1 electron and will become a hydrogen atom. Therefore, the value for n it is equal to 1. E0 cell minus 0 0.059 divided by n log anode concentration or anode ion concentration divided by cathode ion concentration into log anode ion concentration that is 10 raised to minus 8 divided by 10 raised to minus 3 and we will get minus 0 0.059 into log 10 raised to minus 8 into 10 raised to plus 3, okay. 10 raised to minus 8 into 10 raised to plus 3 and we will get 10 raised to minus 5, okay. That is E cell equals 0 0.059 into 10 raised log 10 raised to minus 5. Okay, log A raised to B is B log A. Therefore, we can write minus 0 0.059 into minus 5 log 10 and log 10 is equal to 1. Therefore, the final answer will be 5 into 0 0.059, okay, 0 0.059 into 5. And we can find out the final answer, 5 into 0 0.05, we can approximate it as 0 0.06, okay. We will get an approximate value that is 30, 16 to 5 is 30, 30, 
that is 0 0.30 approximately okay you will get the approximate value that is 0 0.30 volt and look at the options here the option number 3 that is option C that is equal to 0 0.295 that is approximately equal to 0 0.30 volt the for our correct answer is option C 0 0.295 volt clear then the next question okay which one of the following is wrong okay we need to find out the incorrect statement the first statement specific conductance increases on dilution second one specific conductance decreases on dilution then equivalent conductance increases on dilution molar conductance increases on dilution here the second statement specific conductance increase sorry specific conductance decreases on dilution that's a correct statement equivalent conductance and molar conductance increases on dilution that is third and fourth statement is correct and option number a that is the first statement specific conductance increases on dilution that is incorrect specific conductance decreases on dilution okay therefore our correct answer is option a the incorrect statement specific conductance increases on dilution that's a wrong statement the specific conductance decreases on dilution i will explain the reason suppose a solution contains or uh, an electrolyte contains a volume of one liter and what is specific conductance or conductivity a specific conductance or conductivity is the conductance of a unit volume of solution suppose this is a unit volume and the conductance of this unit volume is known as conductivity or specific conductance okay here if you dilute this solution the entire volume will increase okay if you dilute the solution the volume of solution will increase suppose it is changed to 2 liter okay then if you take a unit volume here the number of ions per unit volume will be lesser than the first one suppose the first solution contains 2 ions per unit volume the dilution after the dilution the same unit volume contains 1 ion per unit volume that means the number of ions per unit volume decreases that's why specific conductance decreases on dilution that is when dilution increases the number of ions per unit volume number of ions per unit volume decreases okay and what is conductance specific conductance or conductivity the conductance of unit volume of a solution that is the conductance of unit volume or conductivity will decrease that's why when dilution increases the specific conductance or conductivity decreases okay therefore incorrect statement is option number one specific conductance increases on dilution that's a wrong statement specific conductance decreases on dilution okay and the next question a silver cup is plated with silver by passing 965 ampere current for one second okay the mass of silver deposited is the given terms are the current is 965 ampere and the time taken for this electrolysis it is one second 
we need to find out the mass of silver deposited. And the atomic mass of silver is given, that is 107.87, okay? It's a simple question, that is, according to Faraday's law, according to Faraday's law, we can write the mass deposited on the cathode W is equal to Zit, where Z, that is electrochemical equivalent, is equal to equivalent weight of metal divided by 96500. And equivalent weight is equal to, equivalent weight of a metal is equal to atomic mass divided by valence. The atomic mass of silver, it is 107.87. And the valency of silver, it is 1. Therefore, we can write mass deposited W is equal to E by 96500, where E is the electrochemical, sorry, it is the equivalent weight of metal, that is 107.87. Z is the electrochemical equivalent, okay? Divided by 96500, then we can substitute the value for current and time. The current it is equal to 965 ampere and time it is one second. Then we can cancel 965. Here we will get 107.87 by 100. That is 1.0787 gram. Okay. That is option C is the correct answer. 1.0787 gram. Okay. If you remember this formula, we can easily find out the mass deposited on the cathode. W is equal to Zit, where Z is the electrochemical equivalent, and Z equal to E divided by 96500, where E is the equivalent weight of metal. That we can find out by using the formula atomic mass divided by valency. Clear? Then the next question. When electricity is passed through a solution of AlCl3, 13.5 gram, 13.5 gram aluminum are deposited. Clear? The number of Faraday's must be. Okay? We need to find out the number of Faraday's. Okay? The number of Faraday's required for this reaction. First of all, we can write the reduction reaction of aluminum. Okay? That is Al3 plus ion from AlCl3, okay? AlCl3 will produce 3 Cl minus ion and 1 Al3 plus ion. This Al3 plus ion accepts 3 electron and will become an aluminum metal. It is in a state, here it is in solid state, okay? From this equation, we can write 1 mole aluminum requires three moles of electron, okay? That is the charge of three mole of electron is three Faraday. Therefore, we can write one mole aluminum requires three Faraday, okay? Here, the mass of aluminum is given. That is 13.5 gram, okay? 13.5 gram. Therefore, we need to find out the number of moles of aluminum, clear? That is, the mass of aluminum deposited is 13.5 gram. We can find out the number of moles of aluminum. The formula is given mass divided by molar mass. Given mass, 13.5. Aluminum molar mass, 27. Aluminum, it is a monoatomic molecule. That is, one molecule of aluminum contains one atom. Therefore, atomic mass of aluminum will be equal to the molecular mass. Then 135 divided by 27. We can write 135 into 10 raised to minus 1 divided by 27. Okay? We can cancel 27 and 135. Here 9, here 4, and 4. 
okay then we can cancel 45 and 9 we will get 5 into 10 raised to minus 1 that is 0 0.5 okay that is one mole aluminium requires three faraday current three faraday charge therefore here 0 0.5 mole aluminium deposit therefore the charge required will be half of this value that is 1.5 farad clear 1 mole aluminium requires 3 faraday charge therefore 0 0.5 mole aluminium requires 1.5 faraday charge therefore our correct answer it is option c 1.5 farad clear it's a simple question then the next one okay the value of lambda infinity m that is limiting molar conductivity for NH4Cl, NaOS and NaCl are 129.8, 248.1 and 126.4 ohm raised to minus 1 centimeter square mole raised to minus 1. Calculate the lambda infinity m that is limiting molar conductivity for NH4OH solution. Clear? Therefore, we can write the given times lambda infinity m that is equal to lambda 0 m. Lambda 0 m. That is the limiting molar conductivity. Okay? The given times are lambda 0 m of NH4 Cl. Okay? NH4 Cl. That is given 129.8 129.8 then lambda 0 m of NaOH okay NaOH that is given in the question 248.1 248.1 okay and the next one lambda 0 m of NaCl 126.4 lambda 0 m of NaCl 126.4 okay then we need to calculate limiting molar conductivity of NH4 rides okay lambda 0 m of NH4 oils okay we can calculate the limiting molar conductivity of NH4 oils from these three electrolytes that is lambda 0 m of NH4 OH, we can write it as lambda 0 m of NH4 plus plus lambda 0 m of OH minus. That is called as Schussler. Then that is equals, okay, lambda 0 m of NH4 Cl, then plus lambda 0 m of NaOH minus lambda 0 m of NAC. That is a relationship between limiting molar conductivity of NH4 OH and these three solutions. Okay. If you split this equation, we will get lambda 0 m of NH4 plus limiting molar conductivity of Cl minus plus lambda 0 m of Na plus plus lambda 0 m of OH minus minus lambda 0 m of Na plus minus lambda 0 m of Cl minus. The limiting molar conductivities of sodium and chlorine will cancel and we will get lambda 0 m of NH4 plus plus lambda 0 m of OH minus. That is limiting molar conducti conductivity of NH4 OH. Okay, we got the relation. Then we can substitute the values. That is NH4 Cl, it is 129.8. NaOH, it is 248.1 minus NaCl 126.4. Clear? Therefore, we can calculate 
129.8 plus 248.1 that is 7 1 sorry we need to add these two values okay and three seventy seven point nine minus one twenty six point four okay that is five one five two two fifty one point five that is option B is the correct answer that is two fifty one point five clear it's a simple question and the next one okay when 96500 coulombs of electricity is passed through barium chloride solution okay the amounts of barium deposited will be okay barium chloride the molecular formula for barium chloride is, is BaCl2 therefore this BaCl2 molecule will produce one Ba2 plus cation and two Cl minus ion. Okay, I write here BaCl2 gives Ba2 plus plus two Cl minus. Okay, then we can write the reduction reaction of Ba2 plus ion. Okay, that is. Ba2 plus will accept two electron and will become barium metal solid and this ion is in aqueous state. Okay, here you can see that one mole barium requires two moles of electron. Okay. one mole barium requires two Faraday charge or two moles of electrons okay and here when 96500 coulombs of electricity is passed through barium chloride solution okay if you pass two Faraday charts, that is two into nine six five hundred charts as passed through the solution, we will get one mole barium. But here nine six five hundred coulombs of electricity is passed through the barium chloride solution. Therefore, we will get one by two mole of barium. That is zero point five mole of barium. Okay, therefore our correct answer it is 0 0.5 mole barium. Sorry, 0 0.5 mole. Okay, that is our correct answer. It is option A. First of all, we can write the reduction reaction of barium ion. From this equation, we can write one mole barium requires two Faraday charge. That is two into nine six five hundred charge. Therefore, 96500 96, coulombs of electricity is passed through the solution. We will get 1 by 2 mole of barium. That is 0 0.5 mole of barium. Okay. I hope it is clear. Then we can go to the next question. Electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate produces. Okay. Electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate. An increase in pH, a decrease in pH, either decrease or increase, an elapsed option, none. Okay. Aqueous copper sulfate. Cu SO4. Cu SO4 aqueous. Okay, the CuSO4 
molecule will produce C2 plus cation and SO4 2 minus anion. Okay. And this solution contains water molecule. Therefore, water molecule will produce H plus ion and OH minus ion. Clear? And the reaction is carried out in an electrolytic cell. And the electrolytic cell contains anode terminal that is positive and cathode terminal that is negative. And oppositely charged ions move towards anode and cathode. Therefore, at anode terminal, the OH minus ions and SO4 2 minus ions move towards anode. Then cathode terminal, the H plus ion and Cu2 plus ions move towards cathode terminal. Clear? Then here the OH minus ions will undergo oxidation. Reason? The anode undergoes oxidation reaction and the highest oxidation potential is for OH minus as compared to SO4 2 minus ion. And the cathode undergoes reduction and highest reduction potential is for C2 plus ion as compared to H plus ion. Therefore, C2 plus ions will undergo reduction. And the remaining ions will go to the solution. Okay, and you can see here after electrolysis of copper sulfate, aqueous copper sulfate solution, the H plus ion concentration in the solution will increase. The H plus ion concentration will increase. That means the solution will become acidic. Okay, for an acidic solution, the pH will the pH will be lesser than 7. That is, the pH will decrease. Okay? Reason, the H plus ion concentration increases. Therefore, our correct answer is option B, a decrease in pH. Reason, the H plus ion concentration increases, the solution will become more acidic. That's why the pH decreases. Okay. Therefore, our correct answer is decrease in pH. I hope it is clear. Then the next one. The standard hydrogen electron has zero electron, zero electron potential because hydrogen is easier to oxidize. This electron potential is assumed to be zero. And hydrogen atom has only one electron. Hydrogen is the lightest element. Okay. The reason is the electron potential is assumed to be zero. Okay. That is our correct answer is option B. Standard hydrogen electron has zero electron potential because the electron potential is assumed to be zero. That's the reason. Okay. It's a simple question. Then we can go to the next question. At 298 Kelvin, okay, the standard reduction potential for the following half reactions are given as the first one, Zn2 plus plus 2 electron. That is, it is a reduction reaction. Therefore, this potential is reduction potential. This one is reduction potential. And here also reduction potential reason this reaction is a reduction reaction that is exception of electrons okay the or gaining of electrons then this reaction is also reduction reaction that is gaining of electron occurs and this reduction this potential will be reduction potential and this is reduction reaction Therefore, the potential will be reduction potential. The strongest reducing, the strongest reducing agent, okay, I have explained in the previous lecture, 
the lowest reduction potential metal will undergo oxidation and will act as strong reducing agent okay the lowest reduction potential metal will undergo oxidation and will act as strong reducing agent strong reducing agent okay here the question is find out the strong reducing agent look at the reduction potential values which one has lowest reduction potential here you can see that zinc has reduction potential minus 0 minus 0.762 this is the least value therefore zinc will act as strong reducing agent okay therefore our correct answer is option a zinc zinc will act as strong reducing agent and reason in these examples zinc has lowest reduction potential that is minus 0.762 okay good then the next one the standard electrode potential of okay i have explained in the previous lecture according to iupsc the standard electrode potential is considered as reduction potential of metal that is the standard reduction potential means or standard electrode potential means it will be the reduction potential of metal okay the standard electrode potential that is reduction potential of zinc silver and copper are minus 0.76 0.80 and 0.34 volt then the options first option silver can oxidize zinc and copper silver can reduce zn2 plus and c2 plus zinc can reduce ag plus and cu2 plus copper can oxidize zinc and silver i have already explained in the previous question the metal having lowest reduction potential will act as strong reducing agent here you can see here the zinc reduction potential it is minus 0.76 therefore zinc will act as strong reducing agent therefore we can select the correct answer that is zinc will act as strong reducing agent that means zinc can reduce ag plus and cu2 plus ions okay therefore our correct answer is option c zinc can reduce ag plus and cu2 plus ions clear then the next one okay normal aluminum alcl3 coupled with standard hydrogen electrode that is she gives an emf of 1.66 volt okay the standard oxidation electrode potential of aluminum is okay the cell potential it is given that is 1.66 we can write the formula for the calculation of cell potential what is cell potential it is a potential difference between two electrodes okay that is e cell equals e cathode minus e anode or we can write e right minus e left okay there is an anode terminal there is a cathode terminal at anode the oxidation reaction takes place at cathode reduction reaction takes place okay here the standard hydrogen electrode and aluminum is used okay therefore the she will be connected to the cathode terminal 
and the aluminum will act as the anode terminal okay the reason the oxidation potential or the reduction potential of hydrogen is greater than aluminum okay therefore we can write e cell it is given in this question 1.66 z equals cathode potential cathode it is hydrogen electrode that is standard hydrogen electrode minus anode potential okay 1.66 z equals the standard hydrogen electrode for standard hydrogen electrode the reduction potential that is equal to zero minus anode potential from this data we can write ea that is anode potential that is equals minus of 1.66 that is reduction potential of aluminium the reduction potential of aluminium that is equal to 1.66 volt but the question is find the standard oxidation electrode potential okay that is oxidation potential is equal to minus of reduction potential therefore we can write the oxidation potential of aluminium that is equal to minus of minus 1.66 volt that is plus 1.66 volt okay therefore our correct answer it is plus 1.66 volt that is option b is the correct answer plus 1.66 volt clear good then the next one okay consider the following half cell reactions three reduction reactions are given and three sorry four reduction reactions are given and four reduction potentials 0.96 minus 0.12 plus 0.18 minus 1.12 and the question is what combination of two half cells would result in a cell with the largest potential okay the cell potential equation that is e cell equals e cathode minus e anode okay or we can write highest reduction potential minus highest oxidation sorry highest highest reduction potential minus lowest reduction potential okay and in terms of oxidation potential we can write highest oxidation potential minus lowest oxidation potential okay and the question is what combination of two half cells would result in a cell with the largest potential that is which one is the largest cell potential okay when the difference between the potentials increases the cell potential increases okay if the difference increases the cell potential also increases therefore in these options we need to find out the largest reduction potential and the lowest reduction potential okay that pair has highest difference in reduction potential and it will have the highest cell potential okay here you can see that the highest reduction potential is for the first element that is 0.96 and the least reduction potential the least reduction potential is for fourth one minus 1.12 volt these two pair will give highest difference in reduction potential therefore the cell potential is highest for these two pair that is 1 and 4 therefore our correct option is option c the pair 1 and 4 will have largest cell potential reason these two pair has highest 
difference in reduction potential okay then the next one for the reactions mnO4 minus plus 8H plus plus 5 electron gives Mn2 plus plus 4H2O and the potential of first equation it is 1.51 volt and potential of second equation is, is it is 1.23 volt and the question is find out the potential of third equation okay two equations are given we need to find out the potential of third equation okay first of all we can write the first equation the first equation is mn of 4 minus plus 8h plus plus 5 electron 8h plus plus 5 electron gives mn2 plus plus 4h2o mn2 plus plus 4h2o okay we can assign equation number one then we can write the second equation mno2 plus 4h plus plus 2 electron mno2 plus 4h plus plus 2 electron gives okay mno2 plus 4h plus plus 2 electron gives mn2 plus plus 2h2o mn2 plus plus 2h2o that is equation number two okay then we can write the third equation that is mn of 4 minus plus 4h plus mn of 4 minus plus 4h plus plus 3 electron gives mno2 plus 2h2o okay mno2 plus 2h2o mno2 plus 2h2o that is equation number three okay three equations are given equation one two and three then we need to find out the relationship between these three equations okay look at the three equations if you subtract equation two from equation one we will get equation three that is equation 1 minus equation 2 is equal to equation 3. We can check whether it is correct or not. Equation 1 reactants MnO4 minus plus 8H plus plus 5 electron. And the reactants in the second equation minus MnO2 minus 4H plus minus 2 electron gives products in the first reaction mn2 plus plus 4h2o minus mn2 plus minus 2h2o okay and we can cancel mn2 plus then we will get mn of 4 minus 8H plus minus 4H plus, we will get 4H plus, okay. Then this minus MnO2 will go to the product side. Then 5 electron minus 2 electron, we will get 3 electron. And minus MnO2 will go to the product side, plus MnO2. Then 4H2O minus 2H2O, we will get 2H2O. That is equation 3. That is the relationship between 1, 2 and 3 is correct. Equation 1 minus 2 is equal to equation 3. Then the next step, okay. We can apply the Gibbs free energy change in this relation. That is delta G0 3 is equal to delta G0 1 minus delta G0 2. Okay. And what is delta G0 3? 
that is minus n3 f e03 is, is equal to minus n1 f e01 minus n2 minus minus it will become plus n2 f e02 okay then we can cancel faraday's constant then what's the value for n3 here the number of electrons in the third equation that is equal to 3 minus 3 e03 is equals in the first equation number of electrons it is 5 minus 5 is 0 1 plus n2 in the second equation the number of electrons accepted that is equal to 2 is 0 2 okay and we can write is 0 3 is equal to 5 is 0 1 minus 2 is 0 2 the whole divided by 3 okay then we can substitute the values e01 e01 that is 1.51 okay 5 is 0 3 is equal to 5 into 1.51 minus 2 into E02. E02 is 1.23. 1.23. The whole divided by 3. Okay. The whole divided by 3. We can find out the value for E03. Okay. 1.51 into 5 we'll get 5 255 okay 151 into 5 sorry it is 755 okay Seven fifty five, that is seven point double five minus seven point double five minus two into one point two three. Okay, that is six. 42 2.46 divided by 3 clear then 7.55 minus 2.46 we can calculate this value 2.46 that is 0 0.54 plus 4 plus 0 0.55 clear 0 0.54 that is 2.46 plus 0 0.54 we will get 3 3 plus 4 7 7 plus 0 0.55 we will get 7.55 okay that is 0 0.54 4 0 0.55 we will get 9, then 10, that is 5.09, 5.09, okay, 7.55 minus 2.46 is 5.09 divided by 3, okay. Then we can go to the options, the first one is 1 point something, second one is 5 point something, then third one zero point something and last one zero point point something here you can see that 5.09 by 3 the answer will be one point something okay i need to calculate 5.01 by 3 
it will be approximately one point something okay then go to the options there is only one option that is 1.70 therefore we can select the first option 1.70 is the correct answer okay i hope it is clear and that's all about the electrochemistry chapter and thank you for watching thank you all see you in the next lecture thank you thank you all